Here's another question from our interview with Brandon Spencer Hartle of the City of Portland. Presented by your Eastmoreland neighbors, bringing you the facts you need and deserve. And that sounds like something, it doesn't, are demolitions all prevented in the historic district or can demolitions still occur? Oh, good question. Um, so uh, the, there are certain activities that are what we call prohibited. There are things you can't do in the city. Um, demolition of historic landmarks and buildings in historic districts are not prohibited. Um, they can occur. Um, the only requirement is that there be a review, that review um, be at a public hearing, and it consider factors and weight criteria. And those criteria are, are being rewritten in this project. Um, but demolition review can result in yes, no, or yes with conditions. Hmm. And in our experience with demolition review in the city, it's um, there's there's no, let's say there's no general, um, there's no general rule about demolition review. There have been demolition proposals that have been approved, ones that have been denied, and ones that have been approved, even as recently as this summer, approved with conditions. So hmm. yes, you may demolish, but you need to do X, Y, and Z to mitigate. Hmm. Okay. Um, what I'll say, what I'll say too, is um, the uh, current approach to demolition review is a really narrow list of approval criteria. Um, mm. There's and an approval criteria is basically the question. You know, could, does your demolition support this criteria? And in demolition review, you need to meet one criteria. Today, there are two offered. What's being proposed in the future is a list of four options for an applicant to choose from, and so. In a potential East Moreland Historic District, as proposed, there are more routes to get to yes in demolition review than exist today. Um, that, we're not taking that same approach for individual landmark structures, or single places that are designated, Pittock Mansion or Baghdad Theater. Uh, but in historic districts, what we've heard from a broad spectrum of the public is there needs to be a little more range of, of discussion points around demolition review um, based upon a variety of competing public policy goals. And that is going to be one of those areas that um, I can't forecast the future, but I suspect our city council is going to be making some tweaks at the 11th hour here about mm -hmm. what that approach is. Um, do you happen to know what those four uh, proposed uh, paths to demolition are? Yeah, and we're going to keep it specific to East Moreland here in this one. Okay. Since, like I said, cool. there's some difference with individual landmarks, there's some difference with our downtown districts, but we're going to talk about East Moreland. Sure. Um, what's proposed is, and you, as a would be demolisher, would apply under one of these criteria. So you don't have to meet all four, but if you pick a lane and that's your application. Uh, one is economic hardship. That there's really no reasonable economic use of the building. And that one's not all that used all that often. Two is that your proposed replacement better meet the goals and policies of the citywide comprehensive plan. So sort of big picture, a lot of different routes to, to get to if there's a proposed expansion of Dunaway School to have more classroom space and it requires removal of houses. There's, there's no proposal for this, but that might better meet our comprehensive plan. It might better meet our comprehensive plan to remove a, a building and replace it with a um, community garden, um, or it could make better sense to meet our goals and possibly the comprehensive plan to replace a building with more housing or affordable housing. So that one's pretty open ended. Mm. Uh, but new ones uh, would be a, a demolition results in mitigation. And the mitigation would stay in the, the National Register District and could support cultural, community, architectural, social history. And so it could look like um, public history events. It could look like reusing deconstructed material in the new building. It could look like supporting restoration of um, some community asset. Pretty open-ended, you know, mm -hmm. so it'd be a negotiated process. And then the fourth one that's proposed is that the demolition of a contributing resource result in more affordable housing on the site than would result from keeping the building. And affordable mm -hmm. housing is defined as 60% of the median family income. And so that one's a little mm -hmm. squishy, but if under the new um, residential infill project or the allowances for additional housing types, if a development team were proposing to incorporate affordable housing into a triplex or a quadplex or a duplex, um, that would be one route to get to, to yes and demolition review. Hmm. Still a hearing. There's still some negotiation that happens. Um, I have heard from a number of people in the last month that there's interest in having more criteria. That hmm. Well, those may be useful. Those may set uh, a good set of options for policy, you know, for that sort of policy framework around demo review. I know city council is going to hear from more 
interested members of the public who are saying, oh, okay, is there another way to look at this? How can we set that table from demo review? Yes, state law says we have to do it, mm -hmm. um, but we have that local policy choice of how we set the table. Interesting, interesting. So if a home is, uh, goes, uh, if there is demo Visit our website for the full hour long video with Brandon about how a historic district will impact East Moreland. That's at eastmorelandhistoricdistrict.com.